A former anti-apartheid activist, Mkuseli Jack, intends returning to active politics. Now, Jack had transitioned to business, but he feels that the time has come to rejoin active politics in what he says is an effort to bring change to service delivery, particularly in the city of Nelson Mandela Bay. Well, he joins us in studio now to discuss his soon-to-be-formed political party and will also take advantage of his seniority in the field of politics to talk about um, the country's state of affairs right now. Uh, Mr. Jack, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us. Do you have a name yet for your political entity that's soon to be birthed in Nelson Mandela Bay? And uh, what's made, what's caused you to take this decision to, to form a political party? Thanks, Chloe, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, the movement to be formed, the residence movement to be formed, it does have a name, or names, <laughs> as you know, you're going to go with one or two names. Mm. And we are busy uh, cleaning up all the statutory requirements yes. so that we could contest the elections. Uh, so, so what would be these names? Give us a, a sense of what these names are going to be, because I think we, we've got to be the first uh, to get the names, seeing that you have decided to travel to Johannesburg. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, no, I'm not going to give you the names at all, yeah. but you will see as soon as we uh, register and the IEC has accepted and approved our names, mm -hmm. we'll start to... Uh, everything else is already finished now. We're just waiting to put it in the newspapers as required by the law to advertise that we intend to form this movement, which is made up of uh, uh, people who are basically not necessarily, or most of them, I must say, they are ordinary residents of the metro, whom we believe they got the integrity, they got uh, the discipline, they are honest, and they are prepared to work hard. Let me ask you this. Describe for us the state of service delivery in the city of Nelson Mandela Bay and when, in your view, the deterioration began. Well, it has been going on for some time. When uh, the Bishop administration started to, uh, to target the Nelson Mandela metro being the biggest metro and the manufacturing hub, and the industrial center of the province. And their minds were more to see it as a cash cow rather than uh, to, to, to govern it for the people of Nelson Mandela. And the fact that they are not governing it for the Nelson Mandela people or residents is clear for anyone to see. You don't need anything. You don't need to be persuaded to walk into Nelson Mandela. From any entrance point, you will see the deterioration which started to worsen more after the voters decided not to give these parties any one of them that are existing there mm -hmm. an outright co uh, support uh, showing that they had no confidence in them. And as a result of that, there was a terrible vacuum which led to them establishing a numerous co uh, collision uh, governments. Mm -hmm. to, to give you a sense, on and around 2018, Nelson Mandela Metro had something like five, four to five uh, municipal managers in a space of five to six months. And uh, they were just coming, and many of them would hear that they are fired through the newspaper. Mm. That whole setup then, it led to the total collapse of the administration and service delivery to the residents of the metro. And hence the place is filthy, is breaking down. People are breaking uh, state facilities or uh, uh, public amenities. Brick by brick, there is nothing stopping them. Mr. Jack, you are no stranger to politics in our country. Your activist role began I think in the days of uh, the UDF when you were leading youth structures, particularly in that area of Nelson Mandela Bay, but you quit politics. Yeah. 
shortly after the recall of former president and the failed project called COPE. No. The question would be, why would people, or why should people have confidence in what you are about to start now? All right. Let me tell you, okay, uh, the first fact is that I left active politics. I was hoping for good in 1990. Okay? Hmm. All right? 1990. And then I wanted to be an ordinary citizen that enjoy the freedom that we talked about in prison because it was guaranteed that this is what we're going to enjoy hmm. each and every South African. And I wanted that. And we have no idea, none of us who were in the struggle had an idea what governing will mean. After all, the truth is this. None of us expected to be liberated in our lifetime, as we put it, okay? Because we were just going through motions. So the sudden collapse of apartheid and us forcing them, ourselves, we did that, to come to the negotiation table, which led to us to negotiate. When, after I believed that we got the best of my comrades uh, inside and outside, I was a happy man that was going to sleep a good sleep at night mm. and knowing that South Africa was going to be the paradise of the world. That didn't happen. I came back into politics, interested in politics simply because mm. I heard on and around 206 that Mr. Zuma was going to, was seeking to be the president. Mm -hmm. And then it was only then I started to be worried and to be scared and to understand that, wow, the whole thing we fought for is at risk. As a result of that, I went to Pulukwane. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is the truth. And then at Pulukwane, I tried, I did everything in my power with everybody else to stop the election of President Zuma. Mm -hmm. As you know, we're flatly defeated, beaten, bang, bang. We lost, okay? And then, the only thing I could do at that moment for, as Mkuseri Jack, yes. lonely, defeated, embarrassed, I said, okay, I'm not going to be part of an ANC that is led by Jacob Zuma. Mm -hmm. No ways. And I did. I resigned from it. Then afterwards, more people did the same thing, okay? Yes. And then later on, those people formed, I know them, they were great South Africans. They formed COPE. Yes. I supported them. Boom! I said, great guys, your ideas, I support even to this moment. Each and every idea hmm. that COPE puts on the paper, I support it. Hmm. Okay, they mess it up. That's a, a, a debate for another day. Oh, on that point, <laughs> oh, on that point, Mr. Jack. Yeah. Let's take a breather, because when we come back, yeah. I want to ask you, now that we all know yeah. that COPE was a failed project, and we've seen many others. It was not after. my, I was not a leader of COPE, remember? Yes. I was a supporter. But you, were, you were a supporter and yes, a, yeah. a funder, in fact. That's what, that was a description. At well, the time. I found, yeah, but, I but put let, money let, in. Let's yes. pause there for a moment. <laughs> let's, let's pause there for a moment, and we're going to come back and find out why it is that you think South Africans should buy into yet another political entity. Oh, yes, but okay, come on. After this, you're watching <laughs> Newsfeed, the weekend edition. We'll continue this conversation with Mkuseli Jack. You're watching Newsfeed, the weekend edition, and uh, I'm still in conversation with uh, former anti apartheid activist Mkuseli Jack, who intends forming a political party, and this is after years he decided that he was going to quit politics and go into business. Well, he's making a return to active politics. And uh, let's pick up on the point about yeah. the many failed political parties yeah. that people have sought to start. Let's start with COPE yeah. that you were involved in. It's been a spectacular failure. After mm. that, we saw Ahang SA, Mampela Rampela. Uh, that also didn't really... Um, become a success. Now, we have Action SA yeah. that is led by businessmen. Um, 
the businessman in, based in Johannesburg. Yes. Uh, his name will come to me, Herman Mashaba. <clears throat> you are another businessman who now intends to form a political party. Uh, South Africans, ordinary South Africans, are they not saturated with these political entities that come today, gone tomorrow? All right. Look. Which South African you can parade in front of me that says, I have not failed on any good mission? Good mission it does not guarantee you any success. But good mission has to be done. People have to strive. What do you expect us to do? What will one expect us to do? Cope, of course. I know, I knew from the moment when I came close to what they were doing, that they were going to fail. First of all, mm -hmm. they brought people just like that, out of anger. All right? Okay. The movement we talk about, we are building now, it has built, built on the same basis that I work on numerous organizations since 1976 mm -hmm. in trying. Many of them failed. You don't even know their names. I won't even bring them because you were not born yourself. Okay? <laughs> Let me leave that. Okay, let me give you one that you remember. What would you call ANC's track record from 1912 when said uh, came, okay, and tried to establish this movement that was going to liberate our people? 1912, before or just a year, two years after the Union of South Africa, it went on. Bang, bang got dismissed, got revived, got dismissed, got revived, up to the point where in the 80s or early 80s, the regime was dismissing them. When they signed the Gomati Accord, they told us, go and read my book to survive and succeed, where I tell what the Boers told me on the night when Samora Machel was like frog marched by P.W. Bota to sign the Ngomati Accord. What was the outcome of that? Was the throwing of the ANC out of the frontline states right to the back of Angola. All right? And they told us that this is dead. But every time that happened, go and read how I was traumatized by that failure. Because there was no freedom that I was going to have after. But it took us to believe in Oba. We are not going to be deterred by failure of any kind of failure. All right? Hmm. If you don't want to fail, let me tell you now, you are going to achieve nothing. I am not scared. Yeah. Personally, I have failed so many times. But let's go back to the others. Talk about COPE. So COPE or whatever that failed that I was in, I will do it all over again if I face the same circumstances. What we have today, nine years of wasted, nine wasted years, is a consequence of what we saw. What Cope saw is what I saw. Whether they fail or succeeded, for me, it was the right thing. I will do it again, and I will do it all the time. As long as until I am governed according to what Steve Biko died for, everybody was committed for, not for the kind of thing that is happening in this country. Talk to us about the state of the governing party right now, the ANC. It's led by Cyril Ramaphosa. The Secretary General is Ace Mahashule. In your view, is the ANC on a path to self-correction or does it really need a new entity to come to the fore? Perhaps an entity that you are about to start that South Africans are going to believe in. Okay, look, the first thing whether Uli, is this that ne? whether it's the ANC or whether it's a hang or is action South Africa or whoever, at the end of the day, the ordinary South African that seeks a job, that seeks a roof over his house, that wants to feed his children, is not bothered about who governs him. What we want, we want to be governed properly. You understand? So, for me, all of what I'm saying, when Cyril Ramaphosa got elected, I broke my vow that I would never vote for that organization ever in my life. I did. 
No, you I, voted. Yeah, you voted? I voted during this last one. Because the man, I trusted what he was saying. Mm-hmm. And I thought that he knows that. He's, he needs to be loyal to the South African citizens. Mm-hmm. And he came across as such. Because the ANC have turned to be a monster against the very citizens of this country that he fought for. Or, sorry, I must be careful. When I say ANC, I'm referring in most cases to the post pulukwane ANC or what they call the ANC today. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want to talk badly about the ANC of liberation. Mm. <laughs> that is a glorious movement to me. Yeah. It get good, man. But <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is this that yeah, look, the 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 conflict that is happening, it cannot be resolved. Mm. It's a, a conflict that is based on greed, corruption, and criminality. In the struggle, we were taught by those who like Marxism. I'm not a Marxist, but there were a lot of people around me, most of them anyway, were Marxist or some, because it was fashionable, they wanted to be ones, is that they say, when it comes to criminals, since what they are fighting for is not a principle-based, is a spoils, okay? They are fighting for money, they are fighting for that. It is difficult to bring them together and make them unite. And therefore, if there's a fight between criminals over criminal spoils, Forget it. The one is going to take the other one out. It will be a fight to the finish. That is why the, the future of the ANC is extremely bleak at the moment. Mm. That doesn't mean that there are no good, great leaders of the same caliber that I am talking about, of the past that are still there. Mm. But all those voices have been drowned. They are all on the periphery. They are not listened to. They are not even allowed to come close because they will spoil the party. The criminals don't want sense. They don't want the reason. And they will never, ever allow anybody to bring sense to them. That is the bottom line. Who are the criminals in the current ANC? No, I was just telling you the principle of what the comrades told. Oh, by the way, our president said, that when it comes to corruption, corruption only, the African National Congress is the accused number one. And I must hasten to say, the post Pulukwane ANC, although he didn't say that, I'm, I'm convinced he was referring to that one. Based on that, and based on the evidence coming from the Zondo Commission, mm-hmm. and the criminality that took place during the uh, PPE scandal, you will have to be a desperate thug, political thug, to participate in that. I will respect you for the, your criminality because the ANC has closed that criminal uh, room that there was nobody else to come in yeah. other than thugs that are holding office or are supported or are supporting people are holding office. If you look at it, show me any, if you were allowed to go in, okay, maybe they compromise you so that you keep quiet if you came across, okay, take this crap. Mm. But it's strictly that, not only that, but if you look at the, uh, the guy, Sodi, what's his name? And uh, with Sodi. the asbestos, <clears throat> all the money where it went, yes. you can see where, where it was used. M- Mr. Jack, I want to ask this of you, and I'm asking you this on the back of what was said to me by the leader of the EFF, Julius Malema, on the issue of racial polarization that we are seeing now, and in particular, the issue of land in our country. He says, and he counts all the administrations we have seen post-94, Mandela, Mbegi, Zuma, and even this one. He says he has no hope because the ANC has failed, and if anything, it has shielded the beneficiaries of the apartheid regime, and they are the ones who have economic power. But just on the issue of land, yeah. the ANC has completely failed this country. So how do you begin to put on the pedestal then uh, the administration of uh, former president Thabo Mbegi, for example? No. When you talk about the issue of the land, mm. remember, when it comes to the issue of the land, I'm not 
a theoretician when it comes to that. Very soon you'll see me in the courts of this land trying to get the government to give us the land that the farmer or successive farmers have never opposed nor contested our claim on the land. Far back 1998, truly, okay? The issue here is not, in my opinion, about the law. You can change it as they want to change it now. Yeah. You are going to see nothing. They have failed to deliver land to our people because of sheer incompetency and, in some instances, jealousy and, in some instances, just a mere uh, uh, irresponsibility. Yeah, but for example, I give you this example that I'm talking about. These guys, they are not prepared to help and to support black people to get land. What they did, some of my families who opted, or they made them opt for the, I don't know whether you know how it works, you opt for land restitution as it was, as we are doing, and there are those who are saying, okay, we can take money, okay? But what they have done, uh, some, when they want to help you, or so that they can give the numbers they talk about that they have restituted, ne? they go to the family and say, okay, we'll give you money at the prices of 1912, 1914, and hence those families in those areas where I come from, or the whole broader family, uh, uh, groups of my family, they got something like uh, only uh, per family 80,000 rand, mm. okay? They use prices of 90. How can they do that? When actually it's such a simple thing. You, you look, you work on today's prices. And in some instances, if the families are not able to farm, which is what's going to happen with us now with a delay from 96, when we put the claim till now, is the fact that we're getting older and the whole family is not going to be able to farm, is not going to be able to do anything with that farm. But they, the people can ask for money, and there are other ways in which you can make the people keep the asset, what Malema wants them to do, and then you can have the asset, and that asset belongs to those people, and they can negotiate with the current farmer who is there, who is using it productively, and these people can continue to have an ongoing income whilst that farmer is still there, up until they themselves are capable of taking the farmer, which they can do by taking one of the family members and put them with the farmer now, whilst the farmer is running the dairy or the cattle farms or anything, you understand? And then we can go on. This whole thing is just for, the ANC speaks about the land only when it wants to annoy some people, not because it wants to give land. A case in point is that I'm going to pay a lot of money other families cannot do that, to go and take the government to court for that, to give us the land. Because what are you stopping? Why are you delaying? Yeah. And that's what has been happening with us since 1996. Mr. Jack, you know, it's uh, time is our enemy <laughs> in broadcast. I am out of time, but literally in a second. When do you form this political entity? And is it going to be a regional party that's based in uh, Nelson Mandela Bay, or uh, do you plan to launch a nationwide? No, there will be information uh, session. This is what I've been doing since I arrived here in Johannesburg last week, talking to uh, some few people and explaining how we will carry the message across the country generally to, we, because we need support for what we're going to do. Nelson Mandela is very critical because this is named after Nelson Mandela to start with the icon of the liberation struggle. And therefore, it is important that we correct it. In the, it is the hub of the manufacturing sector, which is collapsing as we stand, as we speak now. So it is important that we save it, we make it work, yeah. we rebuild it, we repair it, we renew it, we make it safe, and we make sure that every citizen is safe, secured, their children can have jobs and proper jobs in the place of their birth. But the bigger picture is that we know is to make sure that this message goes to each and every person in the country. It's, it's about time that we enjoy the benefits of the freedom that we had, not to be taken by some few people. If we don't take action, then bye-bye freedom. Kuseli Jack, and uh, you've heard him, he definitely talks the talk, but 
Will his political entity walk the walk? We shall see. That's um, Kuseni Jack, and uh, he is uh, an anti apartheid uh, activist and a formidable political player himself in this country. We shall see when that political entity plans to form.